Justice is one of the most important ideals in America, but arriving at justice is not always easy. My next guest is the author of Justice at Trial, Courtroom Battles, and Groundbreaking Cases. James Brosnahan is speaking tomorrow night at Town Hall in Seattle, but first, he is on the couch with me this morning. So delighted to have you here Thank today. Thank you so much for having me. You have been in the world of, of law and justice for a long time. What is one of the biggest misconceptions about justice in this country, do you think? Well, I, th I think that the if you watch the news, you get a certain idea about justice, especially right now. It's filled with news about tri trials and all mm -hmm. of that. I wanted to write a book, and I think I succeeded, for the general reader. Mm -hmm. And I put in a very balanced case. I tried 150 jury trials Unreal. over 60 years. But half the women, uh, half the people in the book who are really heroes, and it's a memoir, these are my cases, but yeah. often the hero is someone who, like a client. Yeah. And uh, half the heroes in this book are women. That's and I thought you, your viewers might be interested in that. I think it's important for us as we get to a certain age to to give back the knowledge that we've learned, to share in that knowledge. Yeah. Can I ask you, what do you think makes a successful trial lawyer? Well, I think uh, liking competition and being able to exist in a competitive environment is very important, but writing and speaking, and I have taught, I taught for 10 years at Berkeley Law, but mm. the voice is very interesting. I've taught voice for 35 voice? years. Really? For lawyers, Listen to this, for lawyers and law students who are going to go to court and they're going to speak. Yeah. And uh, the elements of voice we work on, and about 40% of the law students in my class have a problem with their voice. And for example, there's one teacher at least who's suggesting to women that if they want to be authoritative, they need to lower their voice and sound like a man. That's wrong for a couple of reasons. One. This is a very delicate mechanism here. But two, you have to be yourself. Mm -hmm. So we work on that, and uh, I, it's... Just uh, to speak with authority. You know, it's so funny you mention that because I have, I have a lot of friends who are attorneys and lawyers, and half of them never wanted to be trial attorneys because yeah. they just didn't want to be in front of people. That's exactly right. In fact, we have a few people in our litigation department, which I think they just assume not go to trial. <laughs> I, I, on the other hand, am saying with regard to trial, yes, I'll do it. So let's talk about that. How, how did you become a lawyer, and what are some of the biggest moments from your career that we can read about in this book? Well, number one, uh, I was watching television with my dad. I was in college, and a lawyer from San Francisco leaned across the table and told a man named Senator McCarthy, who mm -hmm. had, the, had the world by the back yep. of the neck and he said have you no shame and I thought that was the first time I thought maybe I want to be a lawyer wow. um, I think the, the 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 19 cases I picked have all current news value for example a case on the Mexican border mm -hmm. for a Mexican widow uh, a case involving one of the most powerful women in business in the world mm. Uh, a, uh, a, a woman who was a lawyer in Northern Ireland and who was murdered because of the clients that she took. There is one major theme here. Why do lawyers do what they do? And you gotta ask that question, how could you represent something? Right. What is it about lawyers that makes them stand up like this morning on television on your channel, mm -hmm. there's a, a, a man who's convicted of murdering his wife. Why would a lawyer do that instead of doing wills mm -hmm. and estates? How do you how do you defend someone who yeah. is on trial for murder? I think I think trial lawyers are not like other people. I think we are uh, independent in a way, and to some extent, we're outside. We don't mind being outside. I have represented. One man in particular is not in the book, but I do talk about it, where everybody in government was opposed to this person. Now, why would I do that? Yeah, why, why would you why put yourself did I in the that? line of fire? I like thought that. it was the greatest opportunity <laughs> to have the impossible cases uh, special. 
And you would say, you know, attorney, I mean, much like a journalist, you have to remain unbiased. You if have you, to... I represent a lot of reporters, and when they get a story, why am I telling you this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You know, yeah, you're going to run it. And the yeah. editor says, uh, we're going to run it. And somebody says, this person will, will never be able elected yeah. again. I got to ask you, because we only have about 30 seconds yeah. left, but I want to know, you know, there's been so much frustration, I think, with all the, the things that are happening. What do you hope for the future of the legal system in this country? The lawyers are now doing exactly what they should be doing on the side of enforcing the Constitution, and so are the judges. And we must not we must not give up hope that that's, that's what's really going on. And yes. the judges in this, these matters that everybody out there is seeing, mm -hmm. those judges, this is the most important case they will ever have. It'll be in their obituary, and they know it. Yep. I think they'll be good. Thank you so much, James. It's been a pleasure speaking yeah, with you about you. this. I can't wait to dive deeper into this book. And just a reminder to all of you out there, James is holding a speaking event tomorrow night, Thursday, September 7th at 7.30 p.m. at Town Hall Seattle. Head to their website for ticket info.